Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What Do You Say Anime. I'm your host, Peter. On today's episode, we welcome the host of the illustrious podcast, Shoujo Sunday. As we dive into the world of everything shoujo and try to answer questions like, will we ever get to the point of people knowing shoujo is not a genre? Is Usui base or is he a creepazoid? And anything else that comes to our head. Joining me in our conversation today is my lovely co-host, Miles. Miles, how's it going? Oh, it's going really good. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm a big fan of this podcast, uh, the Shoujo Sunday podcast, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to do this episode. I am as well, and I'm glad to hear that you are doing well, but you know, we, the, our listeners are not here for myself. They're not here for Miles. They're here for our guest of honor. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I am one half of Shoujo Sunday. My name is Gianna Luna. And I am so happy to be here with you guys. I'm very, very excited for whatever we're going to chat about. And I'm the other half of Shoujo Sunday. I'm Chica Supreme. Uh, you can find me at Chica Supreme everywhere. It's Chica with a K, not two C's. I'm so excited for you to be here. Uh, I'll kind of like an introduction because I really only know you two based off of like our interactions on Twitter and social media and Discord. So this is our first time talking to each other in person. So. More along the lines of like how you uh, two met, uh, what got you into wanting to do a podcast and specifically shoujo? Well, um, so for a few years, like going into like 2020 and the 2021 and stuff, I was really thinking that I wanted to start a podcast, but I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. And it took a long time of me like ruminating on that to finally land on anime because I haven't seen a lot of anime. I watched a good chunk of it when I was in college and then just didn't have time, didn't have anyone to share that with. And I was like, I want to be able to dedicate time to this and like get to talk to somebody about it. So I put a bunch of posts on a bunch of like websites, social media, looking for a co-host. And then Chica discovered that and reached out to me. And we kind of just met through the internet that way. And after like one conversation with her, it was just like, I don't need to like, <laughs> I don't need to look for a co-host anymore. I think that we would be perfect together. And the rest is kind of history. Yeah, I, that's actually funny that you say that because me and Miles also kind of met through like s online social discourse and he had like an idea for something. I had like a platform. It's like, hey, how about we do something together? And then this is where we landed. Chica, how about you, like, uh, what got you into, like, shoujo and also wanting to do, like, this podcast with uh, the shoujo focus? So, what got me into shoujo? I feel like this is the quintessential, like, answer, but definitely Sailor Moon. Um, when I was, like, in elementary school, um, I have, or at least when I was in elementary school, I would come back from school and then I would watch Sailor Moon. Um, because uh, one of my older sisters would record it, like r whatever the latest episode was on VHS. Um, and then by the time I came home, it was like, oh, okay, this is my time to shine. This is my show um, and stuff. And so I just loved, you know, the story with Yusagi and Mamoru. And um, even if you're a crybaby, you can like still save the day, like stuff like that. Um, and I honestly didn't really know that it was shoujo in particular, but I was always just looking for that. So I would watch a lot of anime and then it's just like, does this feel like? the same thing like I don't know so like um which I mean I like other anime too but it's like okay I'm watching Dragon Ball Z uh <laughs> hmm, maybe this isn't me but card captor Sakura that kind of feels more like me like you know um so that's how I got into shoujo and then podcasting with a shoujo focus um I guess to just piggyback off of what Gianna said because she wanted to find a co-host that would be able to talk about shoujo anime in particular I was just like oh okay well um I'm I guess because of how young I got into anime I'm technically an old otaku so it's like you know I have this extra knowledge and stuff about it and um I felt that you see like so much media that sort of revolves around shonen 
or seinen work that it's like okay well who else is talking about shoujo um which by the time we started the podcast like i already was aware of shoujo and tell um, by Ashley. I think that was the very first shoujo podcast I had listened to. I also liked Chatty AF, which is the anime feminist podcast. Okay. And although I think they talk about more than just shoujo, um, still it was like, okay, that's somebody else that's talking about it. But I think that there was a need to just not have another shoujo podcast and we're specifically talking about shoujo anime and i mean and that's to say that shoujo and tells talk specifically about shoujo manga so it's like okay like we're filling a need so yeah a little bit off of like what you were saying as somebody who i'm more of like along on the the sidelines i'm not really in super involved in like the shoujo and like jose scene however i feel like i'm trying i'm trying to get more involved um how do you feel like this sphere is evolving w- um maybe throughout like the last couple of years because to me personally i'm seeing somebody like colleen really like showcase the scene where i wasn't maybe maybe i wasn't like searching out uh shoujo or jose content and now when i'm seeing someone like uh you two uh, you said shoujo and tell that was the first shoujo podcast i listened to uh, Colleen, um, just when I follow the name, like Mackenzie, like all these content creators, I feel like are kind of coming out of the woodwork a little bit. How do you feel about like the sphere right now that you're involved in with um, creating this style of content? I guess I'm glad that Shoujo Sunday is kind of, con- or at least considered to be part of, I guess, the Shoujo reckoning that's sort of happening. You absolutely Where it's are. like, like you know there's we could talk a little bit more about shoujo manga we could talk a bit more about shoujo anime and there are people that are actively talking about it um so i'm glad that there are a lot more people speaking up and i'll say at least in colleen's case um because she's like um i guess it's sort of considered like the face right like content creation wise of shoujo so like she's gets a lot of eyes like on her good or bad Mm -hmm. um and i think that that's been very helpful and more people talking about it um now there are a lot more fights too but (laughs) it's still it's like there's more people that are trying to look into it or um having this open discussion about it um so i guess in a sense i like that there are more people talking about it i just hope that aside from us speaking up that we see a bit more action or just more content in general Um, you know more anime more manga yeah yeah i think that's really interesting especially like the thing that stood out to me i guess initially was or in that statement as you're saying there's like as we're blowing up there are like there's more fights going on because one thing that i've noticed about your podcast is that it it seems very positive right like there you know even when there's like critiques of things it's it I, i don't like it's not like harsh you know it's just critical analysis which is great and so i guess what are your thoughts because you need room for discussion and disagreement on everything but you know do you guys have like a focus on trying to keep that discourse positive you know or do you enjoy like like where do you like that banter or do you try to keep it positive or you know some sort of mix between the two i i would guess um i i think we honestly we just like do our best to keep it real (laughs) um (laughs) i think that as a fan of something like no matter what it is if it's a musician if it's anime or or any other kind of media or art that there should be room to be critical you know just because you're a fan of something doesn't mean that it's perfect Mm -hmm. or you know without any mistakes and it's especially interesting, you know, seeing stuff that's a bit older and being like, oh, um, that aged interestingly, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, as a person, try to keep things as positive as I can, but um, I don't think that's ever stopped me from being honest on the podcast. I, I don't think it's ever stopped Chica either. 
Yeah, especially with the amount of hot fudge we have in our episodes. Uh, I have never yeah. been stopped. No, <laughs> um, I encourage it, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, we created our podcast to just sort of be a safe haven for people that love shoujo anime and manga. Um, and while we are critical of certain aspects of things we review, I think at the same time we want it to make sure that um, our podcast is sort of fostering an environment where people feel safe enough to be like, oh, yeah, I really enjoy this show or this specific scene, like it made my heart like so crazy. And, you know, I think that while we are able to be critical about certain aspects of shows and stuff, it's not really like a call to have people sort of um, get into a fight mm. with us um, about our opinion. I think we try to do the best we can to explain how we get to like our thought process mm -hmm. of like characters or certain scenes and stuff like that. Um, but we aren't the type of people to, uh, I guess, sort of get into the foray of like, this is this and you don't know what you're talking about. And yeah, yeah like, no, because I think that would take a bit of the joy of shoujo from us if we're constantly fighting people about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I think there's one really fun thing that I like about your podcast when you kind of like move to the next layer of this Sunday that it can sometimes can go up to like zero to 60. And I like that it's <laughs> you guys are. I like when it's like, yes, you are also, you're being analytical, but at the same time, you're also being like casual in yourself. So there was like one part in your Kageki Shoujo episode where I think it was, I forgot the exact one, but then you went to hot fudge, but you're like doing this analytical breakdown about emotions and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, it's like, it's really thought out. And then it's like a character you hate. You're like, you know what? Fuck that bitch. I was like, yes, <laughs> like, yes, this is like the content yeah. that I'm looking for. It's just like, you could be both. And I like that. Like you you both keep it real during your episode so it's like it's really fun to listen to so was it hijri because they went off on her uh, um oh yeah I, probably it probably it probably was <laughs> I, I i'm a massive fan of her because i i love uh ba bad people I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, they're definitely captivating for sure it's, it's, and I th yeah i think one thing that's also important is that some of the stuff we put into hot fudge and ice cream you scream I, I would probably say actually more ice cream you scream we understand that it's written in to make the viewer angry so it's not mm. like we think that it's bad that hijiri was doing these things because it's like we don't want that as part of the show it's like oh the writing succeeded. It yes. got the reaction out of me that was intended. So that's another thing that I that I really like. Just you know, it, it's like, and it's not a negative, but it's a negative. I don't know how mm -hmm. to explain it. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, it, you feel bad, but you're supposed to. It's like yeah. you're supposed to be mm -hmm. frustrated or annoyed, or mm -hmm. that's always an interesting thing in like any any show for me to sort of get my head around where it's like, I hate the way that I feel, but I think I'm supposed to feel this way. So like, mm -hmm. is this good or bad? Right. <laughs> you know, that's sort of the type of thing. But is that yeah. why you yeah. love Devil Man Cry Baby so much? It is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, oh. I, <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I knew Chica was going to react. I haven't seen I, it. But I, <laughs> I so <laughs> it's, it's, it's my favorite anime and it, it made me want to curl up into a ball and stop being a human. Um, yes. I, yeah. <laughs> um, and I had never really felt like that. And so it, it is, it is stuck with me. It's so fun. Um, like the two anime that like hit you the hardest are like devil man, cry baby. And then Yuri on ice. It's just like, they're just so polar opposite. Spectrum. Of each other. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Sorry to bring up your your Yuri on Ice uh, trigger. Yeah, yes. My bad. It's, it's, it's the old Yuri on Ice is the only anime that has made me cry. But um, we are. This is not about me. This is about <laughs> Shoujo and you guys. So, so I I guess I have a, another question for the both of you. Um, so I don't have a ton of Shoujo experience. I love me some Sailor Moon. I wore my Sailor Moon shirt uh, for this episode. I have my Sailor Moon disc plate. And I, you know, I've watched Kami-sama Kiss. I've watched um, a few other 
sort of shoujos, but if someone's trying to get into shoujo, what would each of you recommend? Maybe one or two titles as sort of starter shoujos. You know, what is the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood of shoujo? <laughs> <laughs> Of you, is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood a starter? I feel like yes. It's I I could think I could see be either either or to be honest. I always pitch it to people as like, oh, you liked Avatar: The Last Airbender as a kid. Like mm. this is a little bit of like you have like a similar power system, likable character, you know, grand adventure, but like a little bit more mature maybe. And so that's. That's how I do. I don't know. It was like the third anime I ever watched. So I assumed it was a starter. Maybe it's not. What is the death note of <laughs> Shoujo? <laughs> oh, oh God. Um, um, sorry, my, my uh, thing paused for a second. So I only heard the end of your statement. I love that. But did you say death note was one of your starter animes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Me what too. is the death note oh, yeah. of Shoujo? The but, death yeah. note of Shoujo. Oh, goodness. As uh, in, like, what is a good starter? Fun fact, right. Pete has never watched Death Note, by the way. Really? Um, I've seen the live-action yeah. Netflix movie, and now it's a meme. Oh, no. <laughs> so now it's a meme <laughs> where I refuse <laughs> to watch or read Death Note. I just like saying that I've seen the Netflix live-action. I get the gist of it. <laughs> My, really, I know, really quickly before I derail, I know we have a question. The, oh, the Death Note live-action movie, in my opinion which I guess would be a hot fudge take, is that it's a fan fiction with a Netflix budget. I hate it. <laughs> That's a, I like that. Thank you. Okay. William um, Defoe was good casting. I will, uh, I will agree yeah. with that. Yeah. 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 Um, hmm. I'm trying to think. Something that's, like, not too long of a shoujo in case. I know, um... I think Chica said something that, like, maybe giving someone a film to start with might be yeah. um, okay. a good idea. So, like, hmm. I mean, Ghibli's a great place to start. Um, Howl's Moving Castle was my first Ghibli, so, like, that's, like, my instinct to be, like, watch this. Like, it will suck you in, and that's exactly what it did for me. Um, so I think that would be my recommendation. Yeah. Um, I think for a film, I would pick um, also with Ghibli. We'll go with Whisper of the Heart. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I okay. think it's very good. Um, mm -hmm. It's like a good starter of figuring out. And it's literally based off of a shoujo manga. So um, you get to see how the character sort of finds herself. And she's in this story. And it's like this very beautiful coming of age Story. The ages might be a little weird once you get it, but it's a beautiful coming of age story. Mm -hmm. It's not, and when I say that, it's not an age gap weird. It's just like yeah. middle school, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just like <laughs> deeper themes that are then appropriate to the age of the characters in a way. But it's mm -hmm. still just so wholesome and endearing. Yeah, yeah. Um, how would you, how would you feel about um, Kimi to Doke as a starter anime for shoujo? I love that. I, I love Kimi Nitsuroke. That was one of my early shoujo watches as well. It's so cute. <laughs> the, all yeah. the blushing. It's uh, like I'm here for the melodrama every second of it. Yeah. I, I would also say, or at least to add to that, a, another series could be Yona of the Dawn. Mm -hmm. I think that that's really good. And it gives you more genres than what people are used to when it comes to shoujo. So you'll mm -hmm. see action, you'll see um, intrigue, you'll see adventure, all of the things. I try to get all my One Piece fans to like read or watch Yona. I'm like, you will love it. It's, I mean, I know yeah. there's, there's, it's completely different in like storytelling and stuff like that. But like the idea of like, you know, a group of people going on this like adventure with, sometimes they have like powers, but I just love Yona. And I was just like, you should watch it. It's so good. Um, I don't know if either of you have watched it, but it's like when I when people always get like the like connotation that like shoujo is like romance, and then I last year read a story called Children of the Whales, which is like so far away from what people think is shoujo. Have either of you read or watched Children of the Whales? No, I haven't. Okay. It's on my TBR. Okay, cool, oh. cool. Okay, I I, I just want to plug that. If you think Attack on Titan is bad, you should watch Children of the Whales because it's like Attack on Titan, but good. 
Okay, I just wanted to... Sorry, I had and to throw some shit. if you, I had if you to throw think Attack on Titan is good, you should also read or watch Yeah, yeah no, for sure. Yeah, because sure. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about being positive. Yeah, you're right. My, my apologies. <laughs> Shout out to all my Attack on yeah. Titan fans. You guys are great. Um, I fell off, to be honest. So, so yeah. did I. I have not caught up. We all did. Yeah. Uh, I read the entire manga. I already saw to die, but <laughs> well, I I, I did it out of hate. That I'm, I'm keeping it positive. I did it out yeah, of I, research. Out of research. I, I I guess I did it so I could defend Gabby. Right? That's why I read it. Yeah. Um, no. So, um, well, it it was more like to hate on Aaron because like I I felt like Gabby was being attacked because she wasn't like our point of view character and like honestly like maybe it was like a woman or something and where like Aaron was like i don't know genocide's cool sometimes and gabby killed one person who liked to eat potatoes and all of a sudden was anyways um, Long story short, yeah. that, that oh my god i'm so sorry no no i don't care it's fine okay <laughs> quite an interesting remember that song that. it went viral like fuck oh well, can we say can we curse? yes oh no we can't oh, gabby. That, that's chris he's been on our podcast <laughs> that's who i debated it with that's yeah, yeah. like I, there was like legit an episode where he took like defending Aaron and i took defending gabby and I, it's like i'm really good it's, friends with chris <laughs> that's yeah. funny it's funny how that yeah, went no. viral okay hilarious yeah. um, the aaron aaron ain't do nothing wrong and he like he did so yeah. many things um, yeah <laughs> shout out to chris though. yeah love no for sure <laughs> um another question that i want to ask you too and chica i know you're a huge uh boss Row fan am i saying that correctly Mm-hmm. Okay, I've, I've I don't s- know. Actually, I lied. I don't know. But, okay, w- I feel like I however say, it goes, it goes. I feel like I always say like Barcelona. Like that's th- that's wrong. Um, what are some shojos that you find like under the radar or underrated that you think like would be maybe even like a hit in today's age or something along those lines? Whether it's the manga or the anime. Mm-hmm. That might uh, be more of a cheeky question, because I'm yeah. such a noob that, like, the stuff that I'm watching is mostly just, like, for the podcast, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't, I haven't gone too far under the radar, I don't think. And if, even if I scroll through my, my anime list from when I watched, there's a good chance that it's, like, accidental shonen that I thought <laughs> uh, So I don't, I'm just gonna yeah. zip here. <laughs> um, you said manga and anime or yeah whatever like a series just in general that you you um, use like uh, like why is nobody reading this like i see a lot of like uh seven seeds i see a lot of like um basara i see a lot of like titles like those where you know maybe netflix ruined their adaptation and nobody wants to go out and actually read the content or the source material like do you have something Um, along those lines where it's like please pick this up it's fantastic yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so manga wise I'll definitely say um Sarah. I just say it like that. I'm not saying that you're wrong. We don't know. Okay, but okay. <laughs> I don't we don't know. I love Basara. I have been addicted to it. I thankfully got my set in like twenty fifteen. So I'm only missing like two vol like nineteen and twenty. Mm-hmm. Um but it's a fantastic story about this girl named Sarasa who um ends up becoming like this chosen this chosen savior for her village because uh this monarchy dictatorship type regime is like killing off all of these people and her twin brother was going to actually be this chosen person and so they sort of spread that around the village and they were able to kill her brother and so then she like basically assumes her brother's identity um and you find out that she really is the chosen person but it's so good it predates yona of the dawn um so I definitely feel as if Yona was inspired by Basara. Um, so I would definitely say if you haven't read Basara, you can. Um, unfortunately, there's more on digital than there are like physicals and stuff. But it is an amazing story. And I feel that it gets into so many different genres that literally anybody could enjoy it. What else? I would say anime wise, something I think that would be a hit now would be his and her circumstances. Oh, I've been meaning to watch that forever. 
Yeah, and it's like um, His and Her Circumstances, or also known as Caracano, it was directed by uh, Hideki Anno. So, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the Hideki Anno. So um, the person behind Neon um, Gen- Genesis, like, right? Yeah, Neon yeah, Genesis. Yeah. Even yes. I started mixing the words in my head, but yeah. <laughs> So you got it. Um, yeah, but it is a really cute story, like an, a high school story. But it's about this girl named Yukino Miyazawa, and she is like vying to be like the head of her class, like get the best grades, um, be the best like president of her class, you know, um, be admired by so many different people. And then as soon as she goes home, like she is like a lazy sloth type person (laughs) completely different from like her personality at school um and she has this rival soichiro arima who's like perfect his parents are doctors and he's always beating her when it comes to grades and so she just has this like vendetta towards him and then eventually it just blossoms into like this friendship to relationship sort of thing but it is so good and you get to just see how Yukino evolves and um, comes more herself at school rather than just this persona that she has. Um, I think it's a really good anime. So if anyone hasn't gotten into it, you should. Now, in reference to the manga, it ends at a certain point. So I would say that the anime is really lighthearted and comedic. And I also heard that the mangaka actually didn't really like the way that the anime sort of went. But personally, I really loved it. You can watch it subbed or dubbed. I think the dub's actually very, very good, like, very spot on, um, which is rare for me because I'm more of the sub like mm-hmm. person. Um, but still, it's really good. So I would say those um, are things that people should sort of check out. Um, that I think are underrated. I love it. No, I lo- you had me at Ano, and then you had me at again, like on a enemies to lovers sort of thing, which is like the best trope ever, in my little <laughs> opinion. Um, yeah. So no, that's just added it to the plan to watch, so I can I can remember it. What are uh, I guess like from what I've been seeing recently, there's been sort of like newer trends in shojo, and like the thing that I've noticed is that they've been like pumping out villainous shows, right? Where your mm. main character is sort of a the villainous from like an Otome game, so generally a uh, love interest of like a royal family member and everything, and or of, of a royal family, and then you know there's a bunch of different takes on this, but it's all sort of in that fantasy sort of setting where there's like nobility and all of that have you guys noticed that trend do you have like opinions on that or any other newer trends in shoujo like that you've picked up on is there anything that you like you don't like maybe where you think it's going to go next anything like that um again i'm i'm more of a i only really have time to watch uh what we're reviewing just because i i have Mm -hmm. a lot going on with like my job and stuff but uh just from hearing that, I would say that sounds kind of cool. It sounds kind of <laughs> interesting. I would totally check it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love a romance. I love a fantasy setting. I would say, I'm not to, not to derail the question, but this isn't a trend, but something I would love to see become a trend in yeah. shoujo would be actually seeing stories to completion. <laughs> True. Like the way we got with yeah. basket. Can we make that a trend? Because that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, most definitely. I would say, um, I feel like, you know, with web comics and webtoons sort of having the boom that it had, mm-hmm. like, that's part of the reason why we're seeing so many villainous Atome type stories coming mm-hmm. out. Um, but what kind of gets me from what, like, I've taken it, because I end up reading a lot of the these web comics, um, is that... Even though they're a villainous, all they really want to do is just kind of move off the grid into a nice cottage and have money. And that's not really villainous to me. Yeah, that sounds like me. 
that <laughs> yes okay i i agree i have so i have I just finished um the first season of my next life as a villainess and i went into it expecting her i don't know to be evil in like yeah. any way anyway and she just was she was great and it was an enjoyable show and i had a fun time and everything but like i was kind of hoping for like like all the villainesses are like the nicest people ever give me a villainess yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's what i want too and i feel like all throughout the web comics that I've seen, it's always just, oh, somebody got hit by Truck Coon. Now they're in this story <laughs> and they're supposed to be bad, but I'm not really bad. So I'm going to make amends with everyone and go off. <laughs> the and it's just like, OK, I think that these stories are really aimed at former and current people pleasers yeah. who are like. Who see like, oh, I'm saying no, or I'm standing up to my for myself as I'm a villain now. When you should, it's like no, like you can do that. You are not a bad person for standing <laughs> up for yourself, or wanting better, or saying no to things you dislike. So yeah, I I agree. I would like to see like a uh, actual villainous. That's not. I mean, they could be slightly morally gray, but honestly, I want, like, okay, go get hit by a car, and then you come back and you're mean. Like, I want to see it. So, yeah, yeah, or, like, honestly, yeah. be super based and take down the monarchy. Like, you yeah. know, <laughs> like, do that. Um, but, like, I guess thinking about it, I don't know if y'all have seen Wicked, but these are all actually just Wicked. Like, they're all... <laughs> I love Wicked. Yeah. yeah, no, so you should watch them, because it's all very, like, here's the story about, like, why they're a villainous, or, you know, like, it explains it in sort of a wicked type of way um, a lot of the mm -hmm. time, which is fun. Awesome. Not as good songs, though, I will say. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. The villainous OP is really good. I'll say that for season one. Um, it is. <laughs> um, you, uh, Gianna, you mentioned earlier, like, a trend of not finishing... Like I guess properties and shoujo. Is there something that you'd want to see? Maybe get like the fruits basket treatment, where it not only is it completed in full, but you know it's done by like a great studio and in, in great care and stuff like that. What's something to you that you would like really want to see adapted in that style? Um, I mean, my my gut reaction is Oron, and I know that that's not that deep. But I just, a lot it's of good. people love that show. A lot of people have been, like, dreaming for the past, like, 10 plus years for season two. So, I, I mean, and I just, I love that show so much. And I, I would really, I would love to see how they handled a lot of the more questionably aged things in the show uh, mm. in, in this day and age. It would be really, a really interesting reboot. Yeah, and change Tamaki's VA, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah uh honestly i mean basara did have an anime didn't end well but um it's it's called legend of basara mm -hmm. and you can only watch it like split so you can watch part of it on youtube and then the other part on daily motion um I don't know if Shoujo Sunday will ever... I want us to get to it, but I feel like I'd have to force Gianna to, like, read all of the manga. Mm -hmm. So then by the time we're watching it, it's just like, okay, so get this episode. I'm going to gush about, like, the source material. But I would love to see um, Legend of Basara get the Fruits Basket treatment because I think if they aren't going to do Yona, this is the next best thing. So why not, like, go ahead and, you know, do it, like, full out? I think it, it would just be nice to have um, more shoujo anime available to us versus, like, you'll see a lot of shoujo manga get adapted into, like, live action work. So. That's true. I'm actually currently watching Kimi Nita Doke on Netflix right now. So why don't you say that? <laughs> It's um okay. An another question I I guess I have is like as source materials. You were talking about like web novels and mm -hmm. web comics, like the light novel boom that's happened. You know, so as anime expands where it's sourcing from, right away from primarily manga. How do you guys determine, or do you not like? You know, if you're if you're adapting something from a light novel. 
you know, I, I guess like light novels technically don't have like the shoujo demographic, right? Like that's I, as far as I understand, that's it, a manga thing. It's it's like this. That's what I was wondering about. Like, do you just like vibe check them? Like, yeah, this one, this one can't. Like, how does that work if it's something that doesn't actually have the demographic associated with it? I, I, f- I feel like a vibe check is a really good way to put it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 I think, um, I don't know if we've gotten to the point of reviewing stuff that it's like, okay, it's from a light novel. Mm-hmm. I think for the most part, um, we have been perking like fa- franchises that come from manga. Mm-hmm. But in the case of a light novel, I think it would just have to pass our overall vibe check. And I mean, we've like reviewed shoujo adjacent stuff before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Although, I mean, at that point it basically was shown. We were um, talking about a silent voice, Mm -hmm. Um, but because of the level of depth that went into like the movie um, and also the manga, it's like, okay, you know what? I feel even though it's shonen, I feel like this is close enough to what we see in shoujo that I don't mind us reviewing this. So, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a few properties that are like that. Um, just because mm-hmm. um, from like my personal experience, I didn't get into like anime and manga until I was older, so I didn't even know like these demographics existed. I just read like whatever I thought was like looked nice or had like a cool premise and everything like that. And there's a story called Kono Oto Tamare. Which I know a lot of my like um, shojo friends like adore it, and so I was just like, I just assumed it was a shojo. Like it kind of has like I feel like like how the characters are drawn. Uh, shojo has like a really mm-hmm. like particular like art style. I was like, it's kind of drawn shojo, and it's like psych, it's a shonen. I'm like, my bad. I I, I, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of funny when that happens, but people yeah. were doing that with Skip to Loafer, right? Like, oh they my were, god, oh. Yeah, it was all over Twitter this weekend. Oh yeah, oh, which is. <laughs> My, uh, Miles uh, is really on social media, so it's like really fun yeah. with like he's like, oh, I wonder if people thought this has happened. It's like funny you say that. Twitter exploded yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I saw this this post on my enemy list, and I guess I want to follow up with another question. I didn't okay this with Pete, so I apologize um, for taking the reins. But oh, um, you're mocking so, me, then it's no, you're not. Good. I, yeah, the, the post on my enemy list said Pete sucks <laughs> um, uh, again. <laughs> was it no, you? It, Did you write that? <laughs> that was me. I wrote it. <laughs> And it was on Skip to Loafer, and it was someone saying, like, is it a shoujo? And it says, the art style and the overall move of the series gives me that impression. It's hard to recommend to my friends if this will be, will, will be as if it's determined later, um, a shoujo. And, like, that's what I posted. And I was like, this is so annoying that people, like, say things like that. And Pete mentioned that apparently that topic has been exploding on twitter yeah. recently um i'm not mm-hmm. with the birds really so i don't I, I i don't know that um but what do you guys think is the best way to like or do you even want to like because like in my head it's good to fight that mindset but maybe you just want to keep people who are that i don't know ignorant out of the phantom you know but i like why like uh, I don't know. It's like, what do you think the best way to combat the, like, this is a shoujo, so I'm inherently going to not like it sort of mindset people seem to have? Because to me, that just limits what you could like and enjoy and all of that. Yeah. So I, I'm absolutely on the same page as you. I feel like being closed minded like that is just going to shut yourself off from really amazing media that you could enjoy. Instead of looking at the demographic, look at the, the summary. You know, look at the synopsis and see if, mm. like, that resonates with you. It shouldn't be, like, who who it's, like, technically made for. It should be, like, if it resonates with you, then watch it. Like, uh, one of my favorite animes ever is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and that's Shonen, you know? So I, I, I think that people should be just open to exploring anything, anything they want. Yeah, yeah, I don't care about them. Um, <laughs> yeah okay there you go I, I like that no yeah. I love yeah. that answer yeah <laughs> um yeah I just I, I don't care about them I feel like uh our platform isn't for those types of people like mm-hmm. if you strongly dislike shoujo like I guarantee we are not for you and I'm not like a shoujo evangelist 
It'd be like, you know, I'm going to bring you to the side. Come over here. Um, take this communion. Yeah, like you got to read Revolutionary mm-hmm. Girl Utena, and then you got to watch Kimi do, Tadoke. You got to do <laughs> all this stuff. You got to pray yeah. to Sailor. I'm not going to do all pray of that because, <laughs> yeah, like I don't think that these people that are so against shoujo are important enough to me to waste my time to be like you know, let me just tell you all the benefits of it if they feel that strongly about not watching stuff like that and they don't have to and i'm not the person to do it which i think that also kind of goes into why like um shoujo sunday as a whole doesn't really get into these types of battles that we see on yeah. twitter and stuff like the shoujo Twitter community was trying to tear itself apart True. about Skip and Loafer. And it's like, okay, if you like it and it's seinen, then you like it and yeah. everything. We don't need to have, like, you know, this thing yeah. piece and Twitter threads about this. Like, okay, like, we know that it's not shoujo. Um, I don't think that it's right to... Um, one side, I think, was saying that even if people think it's shoujo, like maybe more people will get into shoujo that way and stuff. Which, I mean, I guess that's a thought, but, like, you know, I don't think that we're really at a point where we're getting enough shoujo that it makes sense to then just be like, oh, well, let's start mislabeling things mm-hmm. and stuff because more people are going to get into shoujo that way. No, like, if more people are super into Skip and Loafer, which is not bad... That just means more sane and stuff. That doesn't mean more shoujo stuff yep. and everything. So it's yeah. good to be knowledgeable um, if you're that interested in anime to be like, okay, what are the demographics? But would I personally like to like for it to get to a point where, oh, it doesn't matter if it's shoujo or shonen or seinen. This is just a really good story and every- yes because I like anime as a whole and, and manga as a whole. Um, demos doesn't really matter to me as much, but we aren't, we aren't at that point. Yeah. Like, like I said, I don't, they, I, I could give two shits. I don't yeah. like, okay. You yeah. don't like, if you don't like shoujo, that's fine. No, I love that. I think that's great. It's like, I, I'm not here to convince you. If you're going to be that ignorant, go ahead and be that ignorant over there. Like, <laughs> that's that's a great. It's answer. also okay. So this might be an interesting take, but I've been like involved with like a lot of communities throughout my life, and like the anime and manga community, especially in like real life, has been like the most open, positive like group of people. Like it's very like pro LGBTQ and stuff like that. But then like when it comes to demographics, people are like, "Oh, it's a shoujo. I'm not reading it." I'm like, "You have the weirdest mindset I've ever like like seen." But I, I don't know, do you, do, do you, have you ever, like, felt that way with, like, it is an open-minded community, but, like, it's super closed off based off the content that they consume? Yeah, I, I have felt that, especially as, like, kind of a newbie and someone who, like, is kind of an anime only. Mm-hmm. Uh, Like, I understand that the source material is, like, that's the thing, but, uh, like, I'm also like almost 30 and i'm trying to sustain myself so i don't i don't like like <laughs> I just, i'm over doing 30. so, I'm doing much, so much yeah yeah i'm doing so much all the time that i'm like i i, I got time for this one thing yep. you know i can like dedicate an hour a week to this and i'm gonna i'm gonna enjoy it the way i enjoy it but all of a sudden it's like cutthroat it's like you didn't read the bible first and it just becomes yeah. like this whole thing yeah so it, it's like so open-minded i'm, and I'm guilty of that but, by the way and it's <laughs> My my favorite piece of fiction is a visual novel called uh, Human Echo, When They Cry. And it's actually a meme that you have to read the Bible to un- understand Human Echo. <laughs> so I was like, oh, oh no, I'm guilty. You, you definitely <laughs> don't have to. There's just biblical references. It's mm-hmm. like, um, you know, but I think that, yeah, no, that that's a very, I think, like a healthy aspect to get like a healthy thing to get into like i think like watch stuff that you enjoy do mm-hmm. it like that i think a thing that i get caught up on is like i i don't know do you have this issue I, I i know you don't never mind sometimes i have a hard time dropping stuff like if i'm or like i can drop things immediately but if i'm like five to six episodes into something like i have a hard time 
sunk costing that. But like, mm-hmm. there's only so much time in the day, so I should probably get better at it. No, for um, sure. <laughs> Can we get to like a? This is like half a joke, but also half serious. Um, mm. Is there a shoujo or Jose fandom that you cannot stand? Blue Spring Ride. Ooh, oh, I love yeah. that pick. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, who? What? Yeah, Blue Spring. Yo, Ride. shout out to my girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, those people we make just, me high. <laughs> yeah, we could not get on board, and it's like we tried so hard to understand. Chica like went back and read the manga, and she was like trying to tell all the details to me in a call before one of our recordings, and I'm like. Oh my god, wait, what? 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 And we're still not on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's not that I don't understand why people like the series. Yeah. I think that it is a good take on um how you deal with grief and how grief affects the mm-hmm. people around you mm-hmm. for better or worse. Um but I just I just don't like it. I don't. I'm sorry. I feel like people say that Ko is realistic, and maybe he is in a sense, but Futaba is unrealistic in that I will only let a boy play me one so many times before it's just like, you know what, we're done. We're not we're not gonna keep trying to pursue this. Um and um I think that was even hard when we were recording those episodes like I was strategically picking out audiograms where we were saying positive things oh, that's fun. because yeah. I, I did not <laughs> want people to like get on our case about it um which I mean some of our listeners were just like oh I think you were being a little too harsh mm-hmm. which is like okay fair but the way that they are online it's like I just Blue Spring Ride is not the hill to die on, no, in my for sure. opinion. Like no. <laughs> when it comes to shoujo, there are is so like there's so much to choose from. Where it's like I would rather die on this hill. I'd rather die for like Basara. I'd rather die for Sailor Moon. I'd rather die for so many things than Blue Spring Ride because there. Are, it's just there are other like stories that even do what blue spring ride was trying to do better mm-hmm. um so like you'll just see like i mean i know i'll see it because i end up being on socials a lot like um you know people low-key like subbing like, they won't directly add us but it's like they'll sub our opinions yep. so like yeah. something that we said about like maid sama oh well you know what this is a hot take but i like maid sama that's not a hot take you just listen to us and you heard <laughs> yeah, that we like, didn't like certain parts yeah, we also um, like maid sama we just you yeah know, we, we, we we like maid sama yeah i love maid sama yeah but it's like we just are critical but oh okay we'll see subs about that um oran there's this one user i'm not gonna say <laughs> her name expose well, him we were or them <laughs> But we are talking about Oran right now, and like uh, we talked about how uh, apparently the mangaka had at one point said that she thought about Mori being Endgame with mm-hmm. Haruhi, and then went with Tamaki instead, right? Um, and this girl, she just blows up. She has this whole thread. That's not what Bisco Hattori said. You don't know what you're talking about. It's been Tamaki from the very beginning. Da, 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 da. And it's just like, okay, tough tits. I okay. Wait, like, are like, you okay? Like, do you need something yeah. to do? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, if you don't like our opinion, mute me. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Mute me. Block me. Don't listen. I will not like, be I don't know. <laughs> but like going off like these subliminal threads like oh this 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 or then and that same girl is part of that blue spring ride fan oh well you mm. don't understand the story somebody tried to tell me um I, uh i said we weren't blue spring ride girlies that is so light <gasps> that is so light i didn't yeah. say i wasn't cuss i didn't say anything i was like we just aren't blue spring ride girls. oh well you know the story's about this and it's realistic da, 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 da. And i'm just like let's agree to disagree oh yeah. well you know and this and futaba this and da, 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 or whatever and it, like maybe you just need to read the manga so and me because i was the one <laughs> responding i was like oh i've read it 
And my opinion, like, my opinion's not changing. Oh, well, you just didn't understand the story. You didn't get the characters and da 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 But why don't you like? So I blocked them. I was like, listen. Yeah. Yeah. Once I, especially once I bring it up, like, I agree to disagree, that means stop. Like, okay, <laughs> you like it. I love that for you. I dislike it. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you the same, Gianna? Are you also anti Blue Spring Ride fans? Yeah, oh, that's a strong way to put it. Uh, I, w- I would say that they are definitely the ones that seem to be I the hate. loudest and like <laughs> the only way that the only way I can put it is the way Chica did. Like they are so ready to die on this hill for Ko, mm-hmm. and I, I just, I can't justify it in any way like i i have dug deep into my soul and i can't i can't justify ko's behavior yeah. is, is ko sh- toxic is that his thing yeah yeah okay yeah. <laughs> and i mean in, my, in in our opinion i think and i'll say this is he the worst male lead in shoujo no so don't come at me with that like he's not even the worst what are you talking like forget that <laughs> like I can still not like him, and that's fine. Um, yeah, I just think that, you know, when he was younger or in middle school, he was very sweet mm-hmm. and stuff, right? And so for me, something that, well, not even just for me, what's hard for Gianna and I to reconcile is just the way that he treats Futaba, mm-hmm. knowing how fragile she is and stuff, because mm-hmm. Futaba is this person that, she wants to have community, right? She wants to have people around her that care about her. And she doesn't know how to do it. So she ends up, like, sort of changing herself to, like, get closer to yep. people around her. Mm-hmm. And this is something that she does throughout the anime and also in the manga as well. And so as a woman, it's really just concerning seeing how many times she's like, oh, I'm, uh, he liked the smell of my shampoo. I'm going to buy a a more expensive shampoo Mm -hmm. and everything um, because I want him to be attracted to me. And he's just laughs at her or, um, or her deciding to like lose weight and stuff because he's always commenting on her weight and everything. And um, I guess in high school, like I said, middle school, he was really sweet. High mm-hmm. school, it's like he'll say like harsh things to her all the time. But you're supposed to be like, oh, well, they're endgame. And it's no, yeah, no. like Having only heard this about Ko, right, this exact conversation, I think I can fix him. <laughs> um, I, I, <laughs> No, you're gonna fall into the fandom too. Don't do it, Miles. <laughs> yeah. Mine, oh, man. I have like a funny one because like I I only tweeted about it like once, but I really don't like. I don't know if either of you have seen it. Orange. Okay, I I do like orange, but I'm not. It is gonna the like top it. recommended, like similar to uh Al Howdy Ride. So that is our that's Blue Spring Ride. So like yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I will say I watched it years ago, so I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember mm -hmm. liking it and crying a lot. So that's all I can give you. (laughs) Yeah, that was that was one where it was just like I was like, it's not for me. It's not my thing. And then just like and then somebody like DMs me just like you don't get it, blah blah blah, all this stuff. I'm like I don't I don't know you. Like the the orange I don't know if somebody in the orange community got a hold of my tweet or something like that. I'm like, my bad, like I just didn't like orange. So it's always funny because like um I was in a fandom and then I realized that I really should not be in that fandom anymore once I realized the type of people in it. Um yeah, yeah. Miles is looking at me, giving me a look. Uh, my favorite thing in the world is Berserk. Um Oh, okay. And oh. Uh, oh. Berserk fans are terrible, and I didn't know that <laughs> until I got into like wanting to talk about Berserk. And I'm just like Oh, all of you people are just trash. So now, now maybe I'll get the berserk people coming at me. But that was just like, was well, it's just funny like that fandom because I think like if you're involved in like social media, you see like the One Piece fans, the Naruto fans, where yeah. they'll come at you if you don't think One Piece is peak or whatever. But then there's always like that sub niche like community where like yeah, there's twelve of us, and you say one bad thing about it, like we're all twelve of you are of us are on you. I'm just like that was orange for me. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, orange fans. I apologize. I won't say anything bad. 
Oh, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> because, no, I, I, I understand what you're talking about, though. I feel like they take, you know, people take screenshots now. Yeah. And then they go and talk about, um, I know we look, he did it, I did it. <laughs> but still, people do that. And it's just like, oh, we're having discourse. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to be brave enough to just directly talk to this person and tell them that they're wrong. And it's, you know, like, mm -hmm. Anime is media. Media is up for interpretation. So if yeah. you like it, you like it. If you dislike it, you dislike it. And it's fine. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I have yeah. one final question. I know we're at like an hour, so I just want to get this one question. Um, I've, You guys, when you started, I, I thought you had like the most brilliant marketing campaign to get people involved in your podcast. Um, Your like promo art for your podcast was just... it. It's genius. I just gotta say that. But... Um, as you've like progressed and had more of like a social presence, do you ever feel the need that you maybe should speak out more about certain topics within your sphere? Or are you more just fine with being this podcast and just talking about what you like? Mm, like in what way? Well, um, like speaking I, out. I guess, I guess the biggest thing now, uh, at least, okay. I'll say the biggest thing for me is more along the lines of like, you know, the Shoji and Jose not getting, like, the respect it deserves. Um, people, mm. like, downplaying it because of, like, what it's labeled as. And you two have a voice. Like, do you feel like you want that you have, like, the need? Because um, I don't want to, like... Because I, I, there's, like, some people that, like, like our opinion. So sometimes I feel like I should say something about, like, what's going on in our sphere. Because people... Maybe there's, like, four people who respect our opinions out there. Uh, you guys obviously have more than four. Like, do you ever feel the need that you are becoming like a maybe like a community leader and should speak out more? Like, does that ever cross your mind? Just because I'm just interested because I kind of feel that way sometimes. Um, <clears throat> I I think that we're instead of like maybe talking about that on on our socials or on our podcast about shoujo and Jose not being prevalent enough i think we're just hoping that by building a backlog and just loudly talking about the media that we enjoy that it will hopefully and you know hopefully we keep growing i mean we're so grateful for the audience that we have now um so if we build the backlog and we reach more people and you know that that in that way we would be helping make it more prevalent without really calling attention to it not mm -hmm. being as prevalent if that makes sense no for sure yeah, um, I feel we created the podcast as a response to Shoujo and Jose not getting the respect it deserves. I think it was part of our um, spiel is like, oh, Shoujo Sunday is a podcast safe haven for lovers of Shoujo anime and manga uh, because Shoujo should get more recognition than what it currently receives. Like, I think that was part of our spiel and stuff. So mm -hmm. we created it because of the fact that we want to see more people talking about shoujo. Now, like, I guess being a voice or using our voice to talk about certain things, I think, um, I think we kind of are walking a fine line of wanting the podcast to just be a place where people can just go and listen to shoujo and they love it. Um, while the same time feeling the need to talk about certain issues because there are certain issues that go on within the shoujo community but um a lot of that in my opinion feels like an echo chamber mm -hmm. sometimes it feels as if there are certain people that want to be mad about something and so they pick out something that's going on within the shoujo community or something that they don't like within um, a shoujo property. And then all of a sudden, everybody has something to say about it, and it's just different variations of the exact same thing. Yep. So for us to speak out about something, it's not as if we aren't going to do it. I just think that we are going to be more purposeful when we're – when we decide to speak out about something. And I don't think we would necessarily do it on the podcast because the podcast itself is supposed to be a safe space. For sure. But like on our socials, like if it's too fiery, 
Like I'll make sure I'm doing it on my personal account uh. versus doing it on the shoujo account and stuff. But still, like if there's something that I feel that we need to talk about, and it makes sense to say something and maybe someone hasn't said our perspective yet or what we think about it, then we'll use our social media to do that. Right on. I love that answer. Um, I actually have one more question. It's an inside joke for our podcast, but could you answer this for us? Is Kageki Shoujo a sided or a shoujo? <laughs> this is very important to our podcast, if you could answer this for us. <laughs> she could just look at, like, I mean... <laughs> I feel like, you know, it depends on the day, right? It depends on the day. Because at first, at first, it was, it was Seinen and then it became Shoujo and stuff. Just like Blood Plus. Okay, Blood mm -hmm. Plus has been all of the demographics. It was yeah. Shonen. <laughs> it, it was Seinen. There's a show. there's one Shoujo volume that's out, like some variation. Um, mm -hmm. What would you classify Kageki Shoujo as? Which demographic? I mean, I'm inclined to call it shoujo, but I'm the newbie here, so. <laughs> yeah, I'd still call it, I think it has similar tropes and stuff to seinen, but mm -hmm. it's it's still, it's shoujo to me, because it's talking primarily about, like, issues pertaining to, you know, women and them presenting people, so. Yeah. You have no idea how big you answering that question means to me. <laughs> I, Pete gets really upset, really upset when you call it a sign-in. Um, I do. Or a seinen. And uh, when I noticed that, because I was just, I just clicked on the manga. And so I was like, oh, it says it's, it's a sign-in. And he was like, it's a shoujo. And so I have been adamant <laughs> with no other evidence other than the fact that Pete gets really upset by it, that it's... <laughs> A seinen, <laughs> but now, now, now we know for sure it is a. Shoujo. But no, I, I, I have been defeated. I think finally. So Let's it, go. It is, a, it is a shoujo. Let's go. <laughs> oh wow! Well, I didn't know this was like the final boss fight. I'm oh, you have. <laughs> we have. That's like we have like three civil wars in our Discord. The other one is whether your team Applebee's or Chili's. That is a huge thing in our Discord. Oh, oh I did. I did say Applebee's. You had a great answer thing. because you picked yeah. Applebee's, yes. which is the correct answer. It, it is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean half price apps, man. Yes. Like, oh my god, and those wings are all right. So hard after nine p.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had three dollar Long Islands when I was in college. So, oh my like, god, count it. Yeah, um. we have we have just the dumbest battles. Um. Uh, that being said, uh, we're at like roughly time. Uh, before we let you go, uh, do you have any questions? Anything you want to say? Where can we find you? Uh, anything along those lines? Well, like, firstly, I just want to say that, like, this hour flew by. I've had such a good time chatting with you guys. This has been awesome. You'll we'll have to come back again. I would love that, truly. Like, hit us up. Like, I would really love that. Um, As far as where you can find us, uh, we are at Shoujo Sunday. That's Sunday, like, Ice Cream Sunday. Uh, across all socials, we're, we're super active on Twitter and Instagram the most, I would say. And we have a Discord server. Links in our bio. Um, I don't know about us personally. Can can we can I share my plug, plug wherever you want? Plug your Twitch, whatever you want to oh, do. Yeah. yeah, so I, I sometimes stream on Twitch. I'm trying to do it more regularly. I'm I'm Gianna Luna. You can find me at Gianna underscore Luna underscore everywhere. Um and that's Gianna with one N. So yeah. Give her your Twitch primes. Yes, please. I would appreciate it. <laughs> Chica, where can yeah. the people find you? Uh you can find me at Chica Supreme um on twitter and on instagram but it's i'm public on twitter so follow me on there i'd love to get to 400 followers guys i'm so tiny i mean i know that i'm mostly behind shoujo sunday stuff so that's why like um although i try to be active on both but i'm mainly like on our sh uh, shoujo sunday um socials so if you're following us on both you're technically hearing from me but you know personally you yeah. can you can i'm cool like you can she follow is. my like twitter and instagram like it's fine um yeah i don't really have anything else to plug um i guess but so, oh yeah join our discord we're kind of cool we're real it's really tiny though yeah we're so building. we're building we're building there. yeah 
not get it. It, it. I think it took us like, I don't even know, a year and a half to be even semi-active. So sometimes it's a struggle, but go out there, yeah. uh, support Shoujo Sunday any way you can. If you can support them, you can support us. Best way to do so. Like, comment, subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform you are watching or listening to us on. I don't even know what we're doing next for our episode. I'm going to Japan in two days, so we'll figure it out when we get there. But um, oh yeah, yeah, I can't That's wait. Fun, man. I'm That's super, awesome. I am super excited. So I'm literally doing like four podcasts in four days and editing them. And uh, wow, yeah, I'm sweating like crazy. So I'm gonna go take a shower <laughs> after this. But uh, <laughs> thank you to, for the both of you for joining. I had an absolute blast, and thank you for everybody listening. And uh, we will see you next time.